The word radar is an acronym for radio detection and ranging, or in other words, locating targets by means of radio waves. The receiver transmitter unit of a radar generates pulses of microwave energy which are sent to its antenna. At the antenna, these pulses of energy are focused into a beam. The beam is similar to that of a flashlight's beam. When these pulses of energy strike an object, some of the pulsed energy will be reflected back to the radar. The amount of energy which is reflected back to the radar is dependent upon the target's material and its surface orientation. Some objects are much better radar reflectors than others. A raindrop is basically spherical in shape and is a fairly good radar reflector. Snowflakes and dry hail, on the other hand, have very complex structures and do not favor radar reflection. Upon returning to the antenna, the reflected radar signals, or echoes, are displayed in the cockpit on the plan position indicator, the PPI. The radar display presentation appears as a down view of the target being scanned by the radar's beam, unless the pilot has selected the vertical profile function, which displays a vertical cross-section of the weather. The pulse of energy which is transmitted from the radar antenna is in the form of electromagnetic microwave energy. Its frequency of operation is 9.3 billion cycles per second. It travels through space at the speed of light. The distance to a target is determined by measuring the round-trip travel time of the pulse. The direction to the target is the direction the antenna is pointing when it receives the target's echo. The Allied Signal RDR-2000-2100 series airborne weather radar installations contain three basic components. An antenna receiver transmitter unit for transmitting, receiving, and processing the radar energy. The antenna, which focuses the microwave energy into a beam and continuously scans it from side to side, and has the ability to point it at a specific elevation angle. A radome, which is a protective covering for the antenna, that allows the pulses of microwave energy to pass through it, and a display unit which displays the processed radar echoes as well as providing a mounting point for the system controls. In order for you to properly operate a weather radar, it is essential that you have an understanding of the characteristics of a radar beam. The radar beam searches a horizontal slice of airspace 50 to 60 degrees to each side of the aircraft's longitudinal axis. The size of the antenna is the main factor in determining the width, in degrees, of the radar's radiated beam. The larger the antenna, the smaller the beam width. And more importantly, the smaller the beam width, the more accurately the system can display weather returns, especially at longer ranges. The type of antenna normally used by business and general aviation aircraft is round in shape, with a 10-inch or 12-inch diameter. It produces a cone-shaped beam 8 or 10 degrees wide. Probably the most important aspect of a weather radar is the antenna beam illumination characteristic. To make a proper interpretation of what you are seeing on the display, you must have an understanding of what the radar beam is seeing. Here is a side view of the radar beam characteristic, with a storm depicted at a distance that causes the size of the storm to just fill the 3 dB beam width. This would be the typical situation for a storm at approximately 40 nautical miles with a 12-inch diameter antenna. To enhance your understanding of this tape, it is important to understand and be able to visualize this situation. To help you do this, some observations are in order. Note that the antenna gain versus angle characteristics is a continuous function at all angles. Now, this means there is a gain value associated with all forward angles relative to the selected tilt angle. In this figure, the tilt angle is shown as zero degrees. This means the beam center is along the same angle as the aircraft's flight angle. Next, the points on either side of the beam where the antenna gain is down 3 dB relative to the maximum gain defines the 3 dB beam width. The remainder of the tape uses the cone-shaped 3 dB beam width extensively to illustrate how the beam spreads with distance. It is also important to realize that the antenna gain does not go to zero outside the 3 dB beam width. It just continues to reduce with increasing angles. 
This is what is meant by a continuous gain function. This understanding is important when we discuss ground clutter reflections later in the tape. Also note that there are small lobes of the gain characteristics at fairly large angles. These are called side lobes. Generally, these are not important since the gain value of these lobes is down 25 or more dB from the peak. However, a bad radome can increase these side lobes to a point that they can cause a constant radar reflection from the ground. This is commonly referred to as an altitude ring because the display will show a concentric ring at a distance equal to the slant range of the side lobe to the ground. Because the radar beam is just like a flashlight's beam, the radar beam's diameter enlarges as it travels outward into space away from the antenna. For those of you who are mathematically inclined, the beam width diameter can be calculated at a given range using the following equation. Beam width in feet equals the range in nautical miles times the beam width in degrees times 100. As an example, if the range is 10 nautical miles and the beam width is 8 degrees, the beam is 8,000 feet wide. Beam width in feet equals 10 times 8 times 100, which equals 8,000 feet wide. At 20 miles, it's 16,000 feet wide. While this is good background information, proper use of a weather radar requires no calculations at all. One of the effects of beam spreading is to reduce the radar's target resolution capability. That is, its ability to separate two targets at the same range, but located at slightly different viewing angles. When the distance between two targets at the same range is less than the diameter of the beam, the two targets merge together on the display and appear as one. As the aircraft approaches the targets and its beam diameter at their location becomes smaller than the distance between them, they are resolved as two separate targets. A stabilized antenna means that the antenna continues to scan horizontally, relative to the horizon, during moderate aircraft maneuvers. To accomplish this, a reference is established by the aircraft's vertical gyro, usually a component of the autopilot or integrated flight control system. With the tilt control set to zero degrees, the radar beam center is set at the aircraft's altitude and projects four degrees above and below the horizontal plane. The tilt control can be used to direct the beam plus and minus 15 degrees with respect to the horizontal plane for a 12-inch antenna. Without stabilization, the antenna tilt angle is referenced to the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and will not be corrected by the gyro inputs during aircraft maneuvers. During maneuvers, heavy ground returns will normally be displayed. Antenna stabilization loses its effectiveness when the combined pitch, roll, and tilt angles exceed about 30 degrees. These limits can be exceeded during high pitch and roll maneuvers, and will cause heavy ground returns to be observed on the display unit. Pilots who fly aircraft using conventional vertical gyros can be expected to experience some stabilization degradation during periods of acceleration. This phenomenon is due to precession errors developed within the gyro. These precession errors are caused by aircraft acceleration during takeoff and shallow bank turns of less than seven degrees. To verify the accuracy of the radar stabilization system, an in-flight check may be initiated. Fly the aircraft level at 10,000 feet AGL. Select the map mode, stabilization off, and set the indicator at 20 nautical miles. Set manual gain to maximum. While flying level, which is zero degree pitch, zero degree roll, adjust the tilt control until a pattern like this appears. Note, record the tilt position for future reference. If the inner ring of the displayed image is not parallel to the range marks, the mounting of the antenna is not parallel to the horizontal axis of the aircraft. Now, turn the stabilization on. If the display pattern appears as either of these images, the RDR-2000 and RDR-2100 can compensate for the angle using the roll trim capability. You can adjust the roll trim with a small screwdriver through access in the radar indicator controller. Once you have the screwdriver in the roll trim access port, slowly rotate it until you achieve an image similar to this. 
with the inner ring of the graphic display parallel to the range marks on the display indicator. As you observe weather targets on the radar display, you see them in their broadest dimensions. The higher the rainfall rate contained within a storm, the greater its ability to reflect maximum radar energy. When the aircraft's radar is in the weather mode, it is calibrated to display different rainfall rates in the following colors. Black, very light or no rain. Green is 0.04 to 0.17 inches per hour, which is light rainfall. Yellow is 0.17 to 0.5 inches per hour, or medium rainfall. Red is 0.5 to 2 inches per hour, very heavy rainfall. And magenta is greater than 2 inches per hour, or intense rainfall.